drums, timpani, woodblock, triangle, maracas, vibes, and marimba, piano. The combination is leader Tony Williams, the percussionist, Bobby Hutchison, vibes and marimba, Herbie Hancock, piano, and the dateline some 27 years ago in the steamy month of August at Rudy Van Gelder's studio in Englewood Cliffs, New Jersey. The artist Tony Williams will be arriving in Minneapolis St. Paul at the Glam Slam on July 2nd, team working with Jan Hammer. Tony Williams is uh, just off duty, I guess you would call it. He's in Chicago, his hometown, and I have him on the line. Hey, Lee, thank you. It's good to be uh, talking to you. Well, that memorable... Actually, I was born in Chicago. Yes. But it's not my hometown. I was raised in Boston, Boston, Massachusetts. Well, thanks for clarifying that. <laughs> Tony, um, going back to these days in August in 1964 with that mm -hmm. rather unusual production team of Alfred Lyon and Francis Wolfe and Rudy Van Gelder, how did you all conceive this date, just historically? Well, um... Not to be uh, self-serving, but in actuality, it was all my concept. They uh, didn't. Uh, Alfred and and Francis Wolf and um, Rudy. They had no idea what was coming into the studio that day. And they were always uh, up. But for they that. were amenable to it. Um, they had faith. Fortunately, they they were you know uh, of open minds, and they had uh, you know they had put their faith in me and said, whatever you want to do, go ahead and do. So uh, that's how it happened. Wasn't that really the nature of uh, one Alfred Lyon? Yes, it was. Yeah. I mean, he, 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 was, he, he, he was a pioneer, and uh, him and, uh, and, and the engineering genius of Rudy Van Gelder made for so, you know, not, not just for my, my, that session that day, but for the whole uh, Blue Note... Uh, Association? Yeah, the whole Blue Note Association. It was just, a, and I was just fortunate enough to be able to come in at the end of an era, you know, when they were still really uh, putting out a lot of product. And they certainly were the people who searched and searched and found voices in jazz like you and others. Well, and, in actuality, they were, they were just lovers of music who put themselves in a position just to, to say to people, um, you know, whatever you want to do, uh, we have faith in what you want to do. Um, you know, it, it isn't more grandiose than that. It was that they were real, they really loved the music. You know, it's not as if they were like, you know, scientists, you know, trying to, you know, or they were, or they were um, uh, fortune tellers who could see the future. You know, it was just as simple, it was just as simple as that they were, they really liked the music. And what do you think they liked about uh, what you did in the percussion area? Oh, I, I, no, I, I couldn't be, uh, well, I, I wouldn't know. Yeah, that may be an unfair question. I, I, I wouldn't be, I couldn't be presumptuous enough to, to, to kind of uh, second guess them. And, you know, I'm just, I'm just, for, I was just fortunate enough to, that they let me do that, 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 that they let me be that crazy. <laughs> About how old were you at the time? Uh, 64, uh, 18 or 19. Oh, my. Yeah. Well, by that time, uh, there, there must have been, uh, you know, as I listened to this composition... Or it would have been eight, uh, 18. Eight, yes. I, I think in this composition memory, which we just uh, have uh, programmed for history, Tony Williams' history, <laughs> here you are uh, living in the environment of uh, the Williams group and the Hammer group now. This was sort of a, a, sort of a uh, futuristic uh, view of what we might hear on July 2nd in this part of the world, I in a different way, of course. Well, yeah, um... Yeah, what you just, what that, that piece that you just heard was, I mean, I was listening to it sitting here in my hotel room and, and um, you know, listening to it, and I'm, I haven't heard that piece in a long time, 
and I'm just amazed that uh, <laughs> that that it even happened, or that it sounded as you know as good as it does, you know. But what we're playing, what we'll be playing there in a couple of days, actually, is um, will be electric music. You know, it's an electric band. It's, Where this is acoustic, of course. Yeah, what you just heard was acoustic on the radio. But what you hear, what what we'll be playing is just a. What we're doing is just we wanted to have fun. We just wanted to go out and play. And I've been working with my band, the band that's been recording on Blue Note for the last five years. And I decided that I wanted to um, do some different things. So I called up Jan and persuaded him to come out on the road and play play for some people. And that's all it is, basically. We're just putting together something that we can have fun doing with no real goal in mind. You know, like we're not looking to make a record or we're not making, um, we're not trying to make any profound statement. It's just going out and having some fun. Because Jan hasn't been out on, hasn't played um, uh, live for about the last six or seven years. And I haven't played in, a, in an electric um, situation since about 1980, 1982. So it was just to go out and, um, you know, and we hadn't seen it. And Jan and I hadn't, have never performed together live. The only experience we've had together as, as friends was when he uh, played on a record I made in 1978, and it was on, Blue, um, on Columbia, um, entitled uh, The Joy of Flying. And we did three tracks on that record. But we've never played live in, in an, you know, for, for an audience. For an audience. Well, this was this is this is an opportunity for us to tr see what will happen. Well, an, an adventure for the audience, all of us, I'm sure, to sit in with you on July 2nd in Minneapolis at the Glam Slam. You open uh, at June 30th. That's today, tonight at uh, yeah Chicago at Ch Park West. Yeah, at the Park West. Yeah. Well, this will be your first test then. But tonight will be the first test, and and we'll, I'm looking forward to it. Because it's always exciting just to do something for the first time, and and you know, and and that's what that's what for me, for me, I, I and I only speak for myself. For me, that's part of playing because the first time I ever played a set of drums was in front of an audience, and playing with people for people is is a big part of why I do what I do. So uh, I hope. Um, a lot of your audience there will uh, come out and see us play. For you, uh, the drums are the focal point of your life. What do they? What do you want them to communicate to the audience? Well, you know, the drums are. What I try to do is to is to to portray the drums in different contexts, and and for me, the drums are my best friend. And uh, you, I, I wouldn't be talking to you tonight if it weren't for my association with the drums. So um, I like to show the drums as uh, having as many as as much character as any instrument. You know, say as poetic or as romantic as a uh, violin, or as um, dangerous as an electric guitar, or as uh, soulful as a saxophone. The drums have many characters. And that's what I like. That's what I want the audience to hear. They're not necessarily listening to Tony Williams. They're listening to the drums because I I don't play any more drums than say Max Roach or Art Blakey or Philly Joe Jones. I'm just doing what they've done before me, but I'm just trying to you know help the drums be heard. Uh, you know, and, and, and help the drums be heard for a lot of people. Tony Williams, thank you for that message. Well, I'm glad you called. It's nice to talk to you, Lee. A uh, pleasure to talk to you. And I've been talking with Tony Williams, who arrives with Jan Hammer and uh, the Tony Williams group at the Glam Slam in Minneapolis on July 2nd, jumping from Park West tonight in Chicago 
to the Berkeley Performance Center in Boston, to the milling city of the lakes, Minneapolis. Hop, skip, and jump. Keep strong. <laughs> <laughs> A pleasure to talk with you, Tony Williams. <laughs> Thank you for calling. <laughs> Good night. Good night.